Hey guys, David, aka Nailbuster, making a quick video setup for um, configuration your your uh, pinup popper. Uh, here we go. Uh, you'll notice in your menu there is a pinup popper config program shortcut made for you. You want to load that up. I already did. So here we go. Uh, you've already gone through the install. You've set all your controller, all the thing. Now you're ready to start putting in some games. Normally you always run this program. You have games, playlists, and media. This is usually what you're going to go through. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go into the games manager. All right. So I have nothing right now. Um, generally all tables, games, everything must be in here first before they can be used with playlists and whatnot. So what we'll do on the top here, you'll see you have add new games. All right, so add new games. Uh, let's, you can deal with all emulators, but since it's gonna be a lot of them, so I'm just gonna pick, the, I will be using uh, Visual Pinball X, all right? If I was adding new games manually, I could open up these, but we won't worry about that right now. Um, and what you wanna do is once you select the emulator, if everything was configured properly, you scan for new games. Uh, include subfolders are for those, uh, let's say interesting people who like to keep all their tables and whatnot in subfolders inside of the tables, but for normal people, we'll just go scan for new games and it'll come up and give you a list, tell you how many you found. Um, so you can browse here and see what you wanna do. Uh, these are ones that it's found. Now, if you hold the control key down, just like in File Explorer, you hold the control key down, you can select multiple or you can just do one at a time, whichever you'd like, all right? Um, if you're not interested in one, like this DOF test table, I can just remove from this, it just removes from this um, temporary list where I'm looking at. Um, and what we do is we select which ones we wanna do and we hit add games. Now you'll notice this checkbox here by default, truncate media on search. So when we're doing media search matching, you'll notice the first bracket, like 24. So what that'll do is it'll make it 24 and then like an asterisk. So that means any media that starts with two, four space. So you could have afterwards version 1.7, 1.9, like Austin Powers, it'll be Austin Powers dot star. Uh, if you don't have a bracket, then it'll just be attack from Mars dozer. It'll have to match exactly that, but you can modify it afterwards, but that'll be the default behavior. So right now I'm just gonna go and select all, and I'm just gonna add games. Green shows that it's been added. So now if I go to the all games tab, so now we have all our games in the system. Wow, look at that. So uh, you can click now, you'll notice that when you click on them, it updates on the right what's going on. And so if you look at something like Batman, right? So the screen name, this is, you could put whatever you want here. This is what you see on the, uh, the front end uh, as a label. Uh, so that can be whatever you want, uh, whatever emulator it's using. Uh, game file name, you can't modify this even if you try. So that's just to tell you the game file name. And then because we had a bracket, you'll notice the media search is batman.star. Now you, you can modify this, you just have to make sure that there's always a star there. So you can go Batman data and it'll always do, or you can just go anything with bat star. So you get the idea. If you're gonna do media search, you do that. And if you want, if you want to make it, if you clear it out, that means it'll automatically uh, do an exact match to the game file name. So those are the two options with media searching. Uh, all this other stuff, you can all set up, so like your game types. Now, if you wanna set up your game types, you'll look here on the top, you see lookups. This is where you can configure all your, so if you wanted to do game types, uh, original, and ooh, of course, puck tables, uh, game categories, all that stuff, you can go save lists. And then when you go back, you'll be able to set up the game types. You can also type in, if you want to, custom, it, it allows you to do that too. Same thing with game theme and whatnot. Also, uh, we'll show in another one that you can actually, if you were importing data, if you had a lookup list, like from IPDB or whatnot, you can just hit import here and it will try and find, yeah, of course you couldn't find lookup data. So, yeah. so you must import it. So what it would do, it'll help you find, it'll search some matches, you double click on them and it'll fill up all this information for you. Um, I guess all this stuff is okay. Um, one thing here, keep displays on. You can highlight over, it tells you what the numbers are. So if I wanted to, and I wanted to go uh, zero two, comma two, that means for this game, I'll uh, keep the uh, topper and the back glass on. Now, if I clear it out, and that means it'll use whatever the default emulator. So if the emulator has just two or zero for topper, then it'll always keep the topper on for all games. Okay. Um, I guess custom variables, we'll get into more advanced stuff here, alternate EXEs, that's based on if you're using VP Legacy and you had to run different instead of Visual Pinball X, you could do other ones. And uh, that's it. 
Uh, you can sort by uh, data added. What's important with data added is because when you just add new games, you'll see them come up on the top. You can filter by different emulators if you want, but that'll give you the general idea of it. All right. Once, so that, that'll get your games in there. Once the games are in there, you need to put them on playlists. Now, one big feature we have here is we have active playlists. So what's the difference between an active playlist and a normal playlist? An active playlist, like just added, uh, runs a SQL statement. So you don't actually have to add it to the playlist. It will actually run a query to select star from games order by. So this may look confusing if you don't know SQL at all, but not to worry. We'll have like a spreadsheet with like hundreds of different examples of, I want, you know, EM tables in the 1970s. Uh, so that once you go and add an EM table in the games manager, you don't have to come here and add it to the playlist. It'll automatically be on the front end because it is like active. It's all, all, all the time updating when you're going into the playlist. Okay, uh, playlist manager, you'll notice it's really, really flexible. You can have unlimited playlists. So the playlist home is the first one you see uh, when you open up the system, uh, just added, it was there. And these are just sample ones. If you're not using these, you can just right click and remove them. It'll, it'll ask you to, I'm running here on 4K. So that's why these things are popping up over there. Um, and so what you do is, uh, in general, you can make a playlist or use the sample. I'm going to make one. So you can right click, add playlist, and I'm going to just say, uh, whatever, uh, a new one. All right, and they'll add one. Uh, again, this is super flexible. I can add a playlist under a new one, and I can call that one uh, under new. And I can have unlimited ones at this level, just like file folders in, in, in Windows. You can have under, under, so you can have like, you know, oldies, 1980s, 1970s, 1960s, EMs, you could do all that kind of stuff. So once you, you have your general playlist up and running, uh, again, you can right click, you can remove or rename them. Um, you wanna start adding items too. So over here, we have all the games in the system. We can sort, we can filter if we wanna deal. Now, uh, playlist can contain Visual Pinball, FX, it can contain all sorts of different, uh, it's not specific to an emulator. So you can have an FX next to a Visual Pinball next to a Future Pinball. Uh, again, control click, select multiple. If you hold the shift key down and use your arrow keys, it'll do a lot of those too. You also have right click, select all. Usually right click, select all is nice if you do like, oh, I just want to do with the uh, search. This will be a position search. So if I go star, it'll do all that. I can just go select all, add games. Right, and that'll be under new. So if I go onto new one, so you get the idea. Uh, again, if you want to remove, same principle, you just highlight and hit remove. That is very powerful. You can do lots of stuff with that. Um, also, you may not, you could do this on the front end, but you could also do it here too. You can right click and add to faves and remove from faves, but you can do that from the front end easily enough. Um, so that is generally how you get that going. Uh, let's look at the settings. Uh, for settings, um, unless you're doing active playlists, you, that means you, if you don't have this checked, it means you're going to be manually adding all the lists. Um, if you have active uh, SQL, you would just put, you probably grab that from the web or whatnot. Um, menu color, passcode, it must be four digits, four numbers only. And that's that. Um, the playlist media name. This is important because um, this is uh, what we use to, to match a media name on. Um, so you can actually, which is nice on the playlist, you can have its own top or show its own, you know, play field, DMD, all that stuff. Uh, so if, if you're going to be using it, like, so let's, let's say we want to just say like PLVPX. So what I can do is all my playlists, I can just make sure it says PLVPX. So they all commonly use a, a, uh, you know, files for play field and back glass and whatnot. If I want them to have it unique, then I can just obviously make it unique and just say, this is going to be playlist new one. A media manager, it uses that to determine what to use for uh, matching file names. This one, you do not put star in or anything like that. That's not what that's for. This has to be exact, or you can use a common name across multiple. Uh, that should be it for playlists. Um, custom filter, we'll show you some examples of that uh, afterwards. But uh, in general, um, you can you can say, I want to make a list where, where uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'll give some samples after, but it'll be like a EM equals yes or uh, game year is greater than 1970. And then when you search it, this will be all the 1970s ones. But I don't want to confuse you with that right now. We'll get to that. That's more of an advanced thing. You can leave that alone for now. 
all right uh that's 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 it for now for the playlists um and that's up and running now media manager that's really really nice this is i'll go quickly through here uh you probably maybe see my other videos but with this one what you do is this shows you a layout of your of your screens um as you change you'll notice green means you have media uh yellow means you don't have media um now a couple of things you can uh, click and drag i don't know i'm running this through a VNC. But what you want to do is you, you can actually click and drag media right onto the play field. Um, also, you can right click and open an explorer. So, I mean, this is very powerful. We'll, we'll probably make a whole video on just media uh, playing. And I actually have one that you can use um, that I did already before. But uh, what's important here, one thing we added new, uh, right click on these, you can create media pack. So if you have all the nice layout of your media, you create media pack, it'll zip it up rename what it needs to rename to make sure that it can be imported by someone else in one shot and when you do have a media zip all you do is just drag it onto the play field and it'll expand put the dmd where it needs to be the backlash the top where it'll do all that stuff for you again i'm just going quick here so that you guys can get up and running um you know well, uh, I think that's all. Oh, and up here, tape. So games, or you can go playlists, and they'll show you your playlist, and you can have all your media set for playlists. All right, guys. This is a, just a quick video to get you up and running. Um, uh, Terry Red will obviously make some more detailed ones. Uh, nice is exit and launch. You don't have to just exit, find the icon. Exit and launch will exit and run your menu. And you're rocking. All right, so that'll get you up and running for today, guys. I'm out of here. Thanks.